Hi everybody, welcome to another video in differential equations, section 8.6, method of provenience. Uh, so in this section, we will write the solution uh, for a special type of singular point. Uh, up to this point, we can only write the power series solution uh, for an ordinary point, meaning that P of X and K of X have to be analytic, meaning that uh, at x naught, there will be a power series representation for p of x and k of x, or loosely speaking, we just say p of x and k of x have to be defined. Right. In this section, uh, in special case when p of x and k of x is undefined, meaning that they are not analytic. But if we have the case of we multiply x minus x naught times p of x, and x minus x naught squared times q of x. If those are analytic at x naught, then we call those points regular singular point. And if it is regular singular point, uh, we can use the method of Frobenius to write the power series solution. Uh, otherwise, it is called irregular singular point when we cannot do anything. Right. Once again, in this section, if the point is regular singular point, then we can write a power series solution using the method of Frobenius. And that method actually is very complicated. Uh, usually a problem uh, will last like two pages long, like this. Uh, so I won't be able to uh, put that on the test or I cannot put that on the test on the final exam. I can maybe put one question in the homework, but that is far I want to cover. So, uh, that method is a bit complicated, a little bit advanced for the, this level. But uh, on this section, what I want to cover is that first two things. Uh, first, we need to determine if the point is a regular singular point by that definition. So the first thing you need to know that if the singular point is regular or irregular. Second, uh, part of the Frobenius theorem is to solve for what we call the initial equation. Uh, so that is the second part of the section that you need to know. Uh, classify singular points, that's number one. Number two is to find the initial equation and solve for it. Because when we get the initial equation, we can write the solution, uh, the power series uh, solution uh, using the method of Frobenius theorem. Right, so the first part, uh, classify singular points. So, let's look at the first example, uh, classify singular point. Uh, so before we uh, find, uh, to classify them, we have to find the singular points first. So to find the singular point, convert to the standard form here. So it must be in this standard form. Uh, so in this standard form, uh, we will have p of x and k of x. So first I'll divide by x squared minus 1 uh, square on both sides. And then we have this. So p of x and k of x is that. Now, it's easy to see that when we let the denominator equal to 0 on both cases, uh, we have x equal to plus or minus 1, where the function are undefined. So we have 2. Uh, singular point when x equal to 1 and x equal to negative 1. Those are the points where p of x or k of x are undefined, or we say not analytic. Right, so we have x equal to 1 and x equal to negative 1. Now we classify them. At x equal to 1, we just need to check those two to see if they are analytic. Put x minus 1 times p of x, and this is what we have. And this function, if we put 1 in for x, this is not analytic at x equal to 1. Sorry, this should be 1, not x equal to 1. Yeah. If you put 1 in to that quantity, it is not analytic because it is not defined. 
is divided by zero is undefined. Uh, so because that is not analytic, uh, this is irregular singular point, right? Next, at x equal to negative one, uh, first we compute this quantity and then that quantity. Uh, put uh, multiply x plus one into p of x. X plus one cancel out. Well, we end up with this. Now, if we put negative one here, that negative one into here. If we put that here, that is undefined. If we put this into this quantity, I mean, into this quantity, uh, then it will be defined. Therefore, it is analytic. Uh, if we put that into here, that also defined. Therefore, analytic. So when we can compute both these quantities, both of them are defined. So we have, uh, so the point is regular singular point. And when it is regular singular point, we can use the method of Frobenius theorem. Right, so simple enough, right? So uh, let's do the same thing. Uh, classify the singular points for this equation. So first thing we do is uh, we look at um, the standard form. So we have to divide by x squared minus 4 on both sides. So we'll have uh, y double prime plus 3x minus 2 over x squared minus 4 y prime plus 5 over x squared minus 4 uh, y equal to 0. Uh, so we have that. So we have p of x and k of x. So x squared minus 4. Uh, actually, I will factor out and simplify first. x minus 2. x plus 2. x minus 2 cancel out. So we have 3 over x plus 2. Right, q of x. It's just that I will factor the denominator as x minus 2, x plus 2. Right. Now, p of x and q of x. Now, uh, what values will make p of x or k of x undefined? Well, that's easy, right? Just let the denominator equal to 0. So we have x equal to negative 2 and x equal to 2. So we say p of x is not analytic or is, is undefined. Where the denominator equal to 0. So meaning x plus 2 equal to 0. So of x equal to negative 2. And q of x is not analytic when the denominator equal to 0. So if x equal to 2, x equal to negative 2. So with uh, the singular points, negative 2 and 2.
x equal to 2, x equal to negative 2. Right. Now, we classify that we have x equal to 2 and x equal to negative 2, right? So here, for x equal to 2, Uh, we will calculate uh, these two quantity x minus x naught and p of x. So x minus x naught, which is 2, times p of x. Right, p of x. So we have x minus 2 times p of x. So give us 3x minus 2 and over x plus 2. Right, and because this one is easy, if we put 2 in here, it is defined. So this one is analytic. If I spell it correctly. x equal to negative 2. I mean at x equal to 2, right? If you put 2, that's what we're doing. Put 2 in here. It is defined x equal to 2. So it's good. Next, uh, we compute this quantity x minus x naught, which is 2 squared times q of x. Right, so we have x minus 2 times q of x. And we simplify, and we have 5 over x plus 2. And this one is also analytic. At x equal to 2, put 2 in here, it is defined. So it is analytic uh, for both of those quantities. So that's why this one is a regular singular point. So x equal to 2 is a regular singular point. Now we do the same thing for negative 2. And we classify them. Uh, so first we do x minus x naught with x minus negative 2, so x plus 2 times p of x. So x plus 2 uh, p of x. That cancel out, we have 3, and 3 is obviously analytic. And x equal to negative 2. So we calculate that quantity, then we calculate this quantity. times q of x oh by the way this is x square right I forgot the square so we still have x minus 2 but doesn't matter though if we put 2 in here uh, we have 0 and um, 0 is still Define right, 
So unless we have undefined, then that is the problem. So if we have the square here, cancel out, we have x minus two, still fine, cancel one of them. And we have this, uh, when we put two in, it is still defined, zero is still defined. So that is the regular singular point. Now, uh, same thing here, we cancel one of them. We have five x plus two over x minus two. And now if we're gonna put a negative two in here, it is equal to zero, but it is still defined. Therefore, it is analytic. And x equal to negative two. So both of them are satisfied. So this is a regular singular point. So that's good. So that, that's the first part of the section have to be able to classify a regular or irregular singular point. Simple enough, right? Uh, the second part is the initial equation, which is part of the Probinus theorem. So the method of Probinus theorem. Now, it will be even more complicated if the center is not at zero. So we just keep things very simple. We let x equal to zero is a regular singular point. If it is the case, then we write y of x equal to x to the r times this. So pretty much the Probinus theorem we just multiply by x to the r. Right? So when we multiply that, uh, we can get rid of uh, one term that make it undefined, hopefully. So multiply that inside and we have this. Now, since we don't know what is R, when we take the derivative, the index will not increase by one. Notice that the difference between this and the solution to ordinary point where the index is shift one and the second derivative is two. Here we don't do that because we don't know what R is. If R is not an integer, Usually, they are not integers, uh, then um, we cannot uh, reduce the index. So we're going to keep it like this. And then P of x, also write that as a power series. And K of x, also write that as a power series as well. Now put all together, equal to this. Now, kind of like what we did before, we split out a few terms and multiply and combine like terms. And we're going to have this. Of course, there will be a lot of other things too, but we focus on the one that have the power of 2 the r minus 2 and the power that have r minus 1. x to the r minus 2 and x to minus r minus 1. And this part here is the initial equation which is very important uh, in the Frobenius theorem. Right, so we have that is called the initial equation. Uh, so actually this is easier way to just find the initial equation without actually going through all of this. Uh, we can say it uh, for the regular singular point of this equation, then the initial equation is gonna be this. Going to be r times r minus 1 times p naught r plus q naught. Uh, p naught is the limit of x minus x naught p of x. That's pretty much the quantities here. And that quantity is q naught, where x go to x naught. So when we do that, uh, substitute into this equation, we have initial equation. And so for that, we have the initial roots, or we call the exponents in dice of the singular singularity at x naught, so we call initial root or the root of initial equations. Right, so how do we do that? So I'll find the initial equation and the initial roots for this equation at a singular singular point x equal to negative one. Right, so first of all uh, we have to write that in the standard form. Of course that's what we've been doing, right? 
and then calculate the quantity p naught and q naught uh, by x minus x naught times p of x and that's why we have this when x equal go to negative one put negative one here we have one four so that is p naught same thing for q naught x minus one wait x minus negative one so that should be So this is Q of X. And this will be a plus because X minus X naught. So we cancel out the X plus one square. We have that and put negative one in. Uh, we end up with negative one over four. Right. By the way, uh, divide by X square minus one on both sides. Uh, we simplify to this and finally the initial equation uh, substitute one fourth in for p naught and negative one fourth for q naught uh, multiply it out combine like terms uh, solve this quadratic equation we have the solution so it's simple enough so we just uh, put that in the standard form and uh, get p naught, get p and q, and then get p naught, q naught, and then we have initial equation, and we find a solution. So it's simple enough, right? So first, put in the standard form by divide by x minus one square. So standard form. Uh, y double prime plus x minus x square minus one over x minus one square divide that on both sides minus twelve divide by x minus one square I forgot the y prime y equal to zero right now Let's simplify this a uh, little bit. X square minus one is X minus one, X plus one. Uh, X minus one square. X minus one square y equal to zero. All right, so we have that. Uh, cancel the x minus one, of course. Uh, so the standard form is going to be x plus one over x minus one. Yeah, x minus one cancel out y prime minus twelve or x minus one square y equal to zero. Now we have p of x and k of x. Equal to x plus one, x minus one, and k of x, negative 12, x minus one square. Right. Uh, it is already given that x equal to 1 is a regular singular point, so we don't have to prove anything. Just go ahead and use it. But we need to compute uh, p naught and q naught, those two quantities. Right, so p naught is q naught. Uh, so pretty much we will take the limit at x goes to x naught, which is 1 in this case. And we're going to have x minus x naught, which is 1 in this case, times p of x. So I have limit at x goes to 1 of x minus 1, uh, p of x at 
x minus 1 cancel out. Now we have limit x goes to 1 of x plus 1. Of course, when x equal to 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. By the way, that is equal to p naught. So 2 is equal to p naught. Then q naught. x equal to uh, x equal to x naught, which is 1 in this case. We have x minus 1 square. 1 square uh, q of x. So limit x squared to 1 x minus 1 square uh, q of x is negative 12 over x minus 1 square x minus 1 cancel out, we just have negative 12. Equal to q naught. Right, find p naught and q naught and then substitute into the initial equation. Right. In this form. Right, all times all minus one plus p not all plus q not equal to zero. So that is the initial equation. Uh, so do that, and we will have r square minus r plus uh, p not is 2 plus q naught negative 12 equal to 0 uh, so simplify we have r square plus r minus 12 equal to 0 so this is easy r plus 4 r minus 3 equal to 0 so we have r equal to negative 4 or r equal to 3. Uh, those are the initial roots. So initial equation. And this is initial root. So simple enough, right? So we have to write the equation in standard form. We already did that earlier. Uh, to get p of x and q of x, we already have. And we can collect those quantity. We did that before. However, this time, uh, let the limit when x go to x naught. And when we have that limit, we have p naught and q naught. Uh, substitute into the equation, we have the initial equation. Uh, so for that, we have r equal to negative 4, and then r equal to 3. Right. Uh, so that's simple enough. Like I said, in this section, we focus on two things. And uh, we already cover all of that. Uh, classifying singular points, regular irregular and one we have the regular singular point uh, we can solve for the initial equation and to get the initial roots right so what do we do with those initial root well now to complete the section we have this example uh, so for this equation when x equal to zero is a regular singular point right so if it is a regular singular point x equal to 0 yeah. then we write the solution as that before take derivative second derivative right like what we have before now substitute into the equation 3x 
second derivative derivative minus the function right and multiply that in and combine uh, the power series notice that when we combine them all of them have the same uh, the power here of x to the n plus r minus 1 and this one right well, we will multiply this x into this x that give us the same as x to the n plus r minus 1 so that's why we can combine the first two series together right both of them have uh, x to the n plus r minus 1 and both of them have 8 n to x uh, to the n plus 1 plus r minus 1 so those are the common factor factor them out we have 3 times n plus r times n plus r minus 1 and then plus n plus r in that term and then that now so I just simplify everything inside the parentheses the bracket give us that yeah. fact our n plus r and we're going to have that right now uh, both of them have x to the r we can factor both of them x to the r factor it out x to the r x to the r from here and we end up with this next uh, what we do is we're going to combine the power series in order to combine the power series uh, we split and then change the index so if we split because this one uh, when n equal to 0 it starts negative 1 if we put 0 in here it starts 0 so we have to split one term and then we have uh, that series will start from 1 and we change the index bottom line is we combine the series and we end up with this combine the power series with that standalone now notice in that case uh, the coefficient of x to negative 1 here just that sorry that is the initial equation we need that to be 0 because if that not equal to 0 divide by x here is going to be undefined so if the quotient is neg x to negative 1, cannot have that. Because if that is the case, divide by 0 is undefined. So we require to have this equal to 0. Right? So that is the initial root. Uh, so for that, we have r equal to 0 and r equal to 2 thirds. And then we have all the coefficient here have to be equal to 0. And that is standard when we solve for the power series solution, right? So we have the initial solution and going to be that. Right. Uh, for that, we can solve for uh, a sub k plus 1 in terms of a sub k, right? And the initial equation easily, we have r equal to 0 and r equal to 2 thirds. And that second uh, recursion relation, we solve for a sub k, we're going to have that. So in that relation, by the way, uh, I did mention this uh, in the previous two sections. If we have a term that depends only on one term, uh, we can use a calculator for this. Right, now we have two scenarios, when r equal to 0 and when r equal to 2 thirds. And for each case, we have a solution, so we can have two solutions, two set of solutions. Two solution pretty much right now when r equal to zero and we just get k equal to uh, k equal to zero when r equal to zero put zero for r and we have this relation and it's easy when k equal to zero we solve for a1 uh, for k equal to one we solve for a2 and so on we have that now over here when r equal to two thirds uh, we're going to have this and k equal to 0, k equal to 1, k equal to 2, and so on. We have those coefficients. Uh, substitute into the power series, we have that. Now, let me uh, show you how to use the calculator for that. Right. Uh, by the way, I make a mistake. That should not be n. Uh, that should be k. 
sorry so i will uh, change that before i post the note online to change that to k that to k to k so after this step uh, there will be no more n the only k so we combine and went up to this point of course now what we do is we're going to use the calculator right so calculator uh, we're going to have that sequence starting from k equal to zero and so on right uh, so we have a not so first term is going to be one so let me write this out first I would change the, the calculator to the sequence mode so we can just hit that for n right so first when k equal to uh, when zero we have this relation so let me write that one equal to a sub k over k plus one 3k plus one right what we have is the first term is a naught a1 a2 and so on uh, for a naught uh, it's going to be we're going to take equal to one <coughs> And then after that we're gonna go with this uh, but notice that if we use the L the index for K is equal to 0 it's going to be 1 so just like what we did last time what we do is increase uh, we're going to increase this by 1 and this by 1 right so the first term in the sequence is 1 so 1 store into L1 second 1 up 1 so the first one is 1 next uh, I'm going to enter this in but before that let's say we need n right uh, so if we need n if we put in 0 here we're gonna have a not if we put 0 here we have a2 so we have a a1 already so we can calculate uh, from that so uh, we let 0 store into n just like this the first one we let k equal to zero right k equal to zero uh gonna give us the a1 here and i'm just gonna enter that a1 of n plus one divide by n plus one times 3n plus 1 and store into n1 of n plus 2 right if we use a calculator before we do anything the a's have to increase the index by 1 because to accommodate it start from uh, 1 not 0 right and after we do that update n and plus one store into n right one two three right and then let's look at the list one 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 over eight one over one sixty eight which is good right actually we should even put uh, in this form let me do that again now uh, let's say one store into list two cannot do that one store list two of the first entry all right that next I'm going to enter that in when r is equal to two thirds two over three store into r 
and at the same time uh, 0 stone to n. Remember, when we use the calculator, have to bump the index by 1. So we have fraction L2 bump the index by 1 when we do that, and plus 1. Divide by and plus 1 plus R times 3 and 3 R plus 1. All of that uh, will store into HK plus 1, which we have to bump the index by 1 and plus 2. When we do that, once we've done that, update the index by 1. Let's look at the list 2. Change the fraction. 1, 1 over 5, 1 over 80, and that. Uh, notice that uh, when we have the solution, when we substitute back in here, that have to be x to the r. We have to multiply x to the r as well. So, in that case, uh, when r go to 0, we have x to the 0 power, which is 1. So that's why we don't have anything here. But this we have r to the equal to 2 thirds. So we have to multiply x to the r, because in the equation, we have x to the r to that, right? And uh, this, of course, initial equation, we let that equal to 0. So we have x to the r. Just whenever we do that, we have x to the r. And that's what we have. So that would be two set of uh, solution. Right. Right. Uh, next, we have three uh, cases of initial equation. By the way, for some certain time, we have to set up y1 and y2 in some certain way. Uh, this is a little bit advanced, and so I will not ask you to do this in the homework or on the test. So I will stop uh, section 8.6 here. As always, thank you for watching, and see you in another video in differential equations.